In this video, we're going to learn about observations and inferences. We're going to learn what the difference between the two are and the different types of observations that you can make. So first of all, observations are facts, they're not opinions. They are made by using your senses, so sight, touch, smell, sound, and by using tools, so using a thermometer, a graduated cylinder, a ruler to measure you know, temperature, volume, and length. Now, there are two different types of observations. There are qualitative observations and quantitative observations, which we'll discuss in the next little bit. Qualitative observations describe the qualities of something. So, for example, you could describe the color or the odor or the texture or the, the scent of something. Now, these types of ob observations are hard to measure. Quantitative observations are expressed using numbers. So those numbers could either be counted values or measured values. So you might count the number of you know, animals in a field, or you might measure the mass or the length of the volume. So tools are used to measure quantitative observations. Now, inferences are conclusions based on the observations, and they're an explanation for the given evidence. The more observations you make for something, the more confident you can be in your inference. So here's an example of some observations and then your inference. So I might hear you know, yelling and music, and I might smell smells like cotton candy and popcorn and and barbecue, and I might see a whole bunch of people looking very happy, and I could infer that they might be at the fair. So now we're going to work through some examples. So the first example would be this picture of a flower, and the observation that I could make is that the flower is wilted. You can see that it's leaning over, the leaves are drooping, there are some petals falling off, and my inference could be that the flower needs water. It hasn't been watered in a long time, so it's wilting. The next example, we see a man sitting in his car. The man doesn't look very happy. Um, it's not going anywhere. So the observation would be that my car won't start. And my inference could be I have run out of gas, so it won't start because there is no more gas in the tank. Our third example, we can see a score board for two teams. So the Diamondbacks have a score of 37 and the Bengals have a score of two. So my observation could be that the Diamondbacks are winning this game. And my inference about this is that maybe they're a better team or maybe they've been practicing longer or maybe the Bengals don't have their star player so they aren't doing very well. So all of these could be inferences based on my observations. So now we're going to practice identifying whether certain statements are observations or inferences. And we're going to use the image of this coin that's here at the top. Um, we can see both the front and the back side of the coin. And there are seven statements about this coin and we're going to identify whether each is an observation or an inference. So our first statement says, there is a face on one side of the coin, so there's a depiction of a face, and that would be indeed an observation. Our next statement says the letters D, E, I are printed on one side of the coin. And if you look up here, right here, you can see those letters D, E, and I. So that also would be an observation. The third statement says the letters D, E, I stand for God. Um, if this coin were written in Latin, that would indeed be true, but we don't know if this language is Latin, so we can't say that that's an observation. We're saying that's an inference based on the evidence we see on the coin. So that would be an inference. The next statement says the coin was made by religious people same thing, we don't know that. We can't make an observation that this coin was made by someone who was religious. So that would be an inference. The next statement says the numerals 1772 are printed on the coin. And 
those numerals are found right there. So that would also be an observation. The next statement says the coin was made in the year 19, or 1772. That would be an inference. We don't know if those numerals are representing um, a year. They could just be random numerals. And then the last statement says the face on the coin represents the nation's leader. So whether it's an emperor or a president or a king, um, we don't know that. We can't observe that. That would be an inference. Now, sometimes we can make an observation and come to different inferences based on our observations. So we'll go through an example here. So our observation is that the school's fire alarm is going off and there are three, at least three different inferences that you could make. The first inference could be that the school's on fire. And you could probably infer this if you had some other evidence available. If the fire alarm is going off and you can smell smoke and you can see flames and possibly you can see people leaving the building in a, in a hurried manner, that would be an example of an inference that would explain that the school is on fire. Now another inference could be that we're having a fire drill. And again, if you don't smell smoke and nobody seems to be overly concerned, then you can probably safely assume that it's just a fire drill. And the third option might be that a student has pulled the fire alarm. So again, um, if there's no smoke, there's no uh, flames, and maybe you see that the teachers or the principal are quite angry, um, perhaps someone has pulled the fire alarm. So now we're going to practice making some observations and then coming up with a reasonable inference for what we're looking at. So we have to be very careful when we're making observations in science that we don't bring in any prior knowledge or biases to cloud our judgment. We don't want to jump to conclusions too soon because we make, might make the wrong conclusion or the wrong inference. So if I look at this picture, I could very quickly jump to the conclusion that it is the International Space Station out in outer space, but we don't want to jump to that conclusion. So we need to take lots of observations and then put them together to make our conclusion. So I can see that this image is on a black background. You can see that most of the background is black. Aside from down here at the very bottom of the picture, there is a slightly curved light blue line. And that line isn't very well defined. It's actually kind of fuzzy. The, the edges aren't very sharp. Right here, we have a rectangular object. Um, it looks like there's a grid pattern on it, and the color of that object is kind of a goldy brown. In front of that object is what looks to be a cylinder shape. It's white in color. Most of the objects here are geometric shapes, so we can see some triangles, some squares, some circles, um, some straight lines, and the colors of all of these are mainly light gray or white in color. We can kind of see kind of half circles here and so on. So putting all of those pieces of evidence together, I can make a reasonable inference that this possibly is a space ob object and possibly the International Space Station. So I could say because the background is black, I infer that this object is in space. I could say because there is a slightly curved light blue line down here at the bottom, that that is the Earth from the perspective of this object in space. I have seen pictures of the Canadarm. So this to me looks like it might be the Canadarm, which is installed on the International Space Station. These rectangular objects, these ones are on an angle and this one's more looks like maybe some light is reflecting off of it. These look like solar panels to me. Up here, look like satellite dishes. And 
I could put all of that stuff together, all those un observations together, and I can infer that this is an object in space and that possibly it is the International Space Station. Now, sometimes we're not always given the entire picture and we need to collect more evidence before we can make our conclusion. So in this picture that we've been given, we're to make three observations and one inference. So some observations that I can make are that there seems to be footprints leading towards each other. Up here, the footprints are kind of a reddish pink color and they are evenly spaced apart. Over here, these footprints seem a bit larger in size and they start being evenly spaced apart and then as they get towards the upper uh, center of the image, they start spreading apart. So an inference I could make would be that there are two animals in the woods that are walking towards each other. This animal is walking at a steady pace but this one begins to speed up as it gets closer to the other animal. Now we've added a little bit more to our, our picture and we can see that beyond that image that we saw that the footprints indeed do meet up eventually. The red footprints still were traveling at the same pace. The green footprints got even further and further apart until they met up. And then these footprints started to mingle with one another. So an inference I could make would be that these two animals indeed met each other in the woods and then they mingled with each other in this pattern. Now, when we get the third piece of the picture, we can change our story a little bit and make a more conclusive inference. So after this meetup happens, the red footprints stop. They aren't continuing. And the green footprints travel in a curved motion down into the right. And they are, the footprints are evenly spaced apart. So I can infer that this animal now, once it's finished with its meeting, travels in a steady pace down and towards the right. Um, I could infer that the reason the red footprints don't continue is that this green footprinted animal was a predator and it just ate the red footprinted animal. Or I could infer that the red footprints were the footprints of a bird and after this meetup, the bird just flew away and the other one walked away. Or another inference I could make is that these animals became great friends and the red footprinted animal um, was tired so it hopped on the back of the green footprinted animal and they traveled along that way. So the question is when do we make observations and when do we make inferences in lab experiments? So during experiments you should be recording your observations only as the experiment is progressing we should not jump to conclusions or make inferences at any point during that part of the investigation we only use our inferences when we draw our conclusions and analyze our results so we don't make conclusions until later on until after we've collected as many observations as possible these are the references for the resources that we used to make this video. I hope you enjoyed.